Hi, this is the third part of uh, monkey species uh, classification. In this part, we are going to use our previous uh, convolutional neural network model and we are going to tune it. We are going to use the Keras hyperparameter to find a better parameters to our previous model. A very important uh, lesson. You can, do, you can use this uh, link to see the full playlist if you missed our uh, previous uh, tutorial. So uh, our first step will be a uh, copy our model, save it in a new Python file name and start to tune it using the Keras hyperparameters. In order to, to use this Keras tuner using this uh, high parameters uh, functionality, we have to install it. So you should uh, pip install it. It's a pip install keras uh, underscore tuner. Next, uh, we are going to add some uh, more parameters. We are going to use the, the patients. We, the, the value will be five. We are going to change the early stopping instead of uh, saving each time the, the best model. We are going to wait uh, five, uh, five iterations. And if the model was not improved, then we are going to, to go for the next uh, step. Uh, first, we are going to build a function. We call it a build model, and we are going to store in this function our uh, previous uh, uh, layers, our previous uh, model. And this function will have a return value, which is uh, the, the model that we defined inside the function. Next, we are going to call this uh, function and we will try to, to run it to see if, if everything is uh, working. Let's uh, change uh, the name of our uh, saved model. We will call it uh, hyperparam. And as for now, we will uh, do some remark to, to our code uh, just to see that everything is uh, working well. And let's change the number of epochs to, to the value of two, just to see that uh, everything is uh, running. It's just a syntax check, not really training the model. Okay, this is the first epoch. We are just uh, doing a, a a dry run of our model to see if the syntax is okay. So this is the second epoch. Okay, it's finished. Let's continue with the definition of our function. As you can see, there are some parameters that we would like to do some fine tuning, like the, the number of filters, the learning rate. So as for start, let's define a new variable. Let's call it filter layer one and we are going to define it, of course, it is an integer. And the minimum value will be 32. And the maximum value will be 256. And the steps will be 32. That means that the, our hyperparameter Keras tuner will try these values between 32 and 256 with uh, this uh, type of steps. And we are going to, to change inside our model. We are going to put our variable and we're going to, to add this kernel size because the, the function needs the, the full argument, not just the three by three, but the kernel size equals three by three. And we are going to duplicate it for the other layers as well. We have four layers. Let's name it uh, layer one, two, three, and four. And as you can see, we are replacing the, the, the filter with our new variable. 
and the kernel size as well. So basically, uh, this process will try for each of these layers uh, 32 to 256 filters in each layer. Ne next, let's uh, define the learning rate. And in learning rate, we are going to uh, to to define several uh, uh, several uh, uh, values. Let's say give the model three values, and the model will try these three values in his uh, in its uh, iteration uh, during the training. We are going to define an optimizer. Of course, the optimizer will be based on Adam and we are going to, to put inside the optimizer function our learning rate new variable. Let's do the same with the dropout. In our previous model it was a, a 50%, 0 0.5 and in this hyperparameter process and we will to try two values, 0 0.3 and 0 0.5, 30% and 50%. And let's change our dropout function with this new variable. Then our last uh, dense, our last dense layer, uh, it's now defined as a 512, and we are going to define it dynamically as well. The minimum value would be 128, the maximum value would be seven, 768, and the steps would be 64. And let's replace the 512 with this new variable. Okay, next. We are going to define the, the compile compile function. Let's replace the, the optimizer with our new optimizer. We will put it as an argument inside the, the compile function. And also we will take this uh, compile function and we will put it inside our function as well. Now it's time to, to define the early stopping process. In our previous model, the early stopping was based on checking in each uh, epoch if the new result is better from the previous results and if it's better, the model was saved. And now we are going to change it. We are going to follow the validation accuracy and if we are getting a better results or basically if if the result is not changed after five epochs he will go for the next trial and he basically the he going to to stop the training for for this uh, trial and you can see that we are going to run it in several trials and this keras a fine tuner next is the the fitting uh, the, the training of the of the process in in a, a basic process it's we are based on the fit function but now we are going to to use another function it's based on the keras tuner so first of all we are going to import keras tuner and then from keras tuner we are going to import uh, the function called random search this function this uh, random search function helps us help us to define the a major parameters, important parameters of our uh, model. The first argument is our uh, function, our uh, main model function, we call it uh, build model. So this is the first uh, argument. Sec second argument is what we are going to follow, what we are going to check, which is the validation accuracy. Next is number of trials, very important argument. That means how many loops, how many trials we are going to, to run each time. So let's define it as five. You can change it later. 
Then the next parameter is, is important as well. It's the number of executions. That means in each trial, how many times we are going to, to do the training. So let's define it as 12. Once again, that means that in each of the five trials, we are going to run the training 12 times. And may I remind you that in each training process, we are checking the, the early stopping and if the model is not getting the best results, we will go to the next execution. That is the, the it's very important to understand it. The next two arguments is uh, more, uh, um, let's say, helping a process to, to store files and store all the, the outcomes but we can retrieve all the information with Python, Python functions. I will show it later. Don't forget the, the commas uh, in, inside the function. Overwrite is important as well. True or false. True means that each time we are going to run it, it will delete the files in the, in the project directory. Okay, let's uh, continue for the next steps. After we defined our tuner, we are now ready to our training process, which is similar to the fit function. So now we will uh, pass uh, all our uh, training and train data. This is the, the first argument. The validation data, which is the, the second argument, very similar to the, to the fit function. Next, it's a number of epochs. We defined it earlier as a parameter. It's now, the value now it's two, but we, we will put a, a, a real value next. The batch, batch size. And of course, the, the early stopping process. Two more values, steps per epoch and validation step we defined it uh, earlier. We, we use the same parameter as our CNN uh, regular or, or let's call it the, the basic model in our uh, second lesson. So after the training, how can we get the results? Since the training is producing many types of model or many types of validation accuracy, how can we get the best one? And how can we get the best parameters as well? So we have two functions uh, for that. The first function, let's say, uh, get our uh, best parameters. So this is the, the way to, to retrieve it. Get best parameters. And we will get, uh, since it's sorted, that the best ones are the first ones, so we will get one in the position of zero. Let's print the result. Now let's uh, retrieve the, the best model. It's very important to understand in the, the previous function, the guest best high parameters, we are going to get the, the let's say the perfect number. So what should be the, the number of filters for each of the layers, what should be the learning rate, what should be the drop-up uh, value. And in the second uh, function, we will get a, a full pointer to our model. So if we will uh, run the, the print model summary, we will get all the, the model structure.
and let's save our best model. So, so we can uh, use it uh, later for, for testing. Okay, we are ready to test it. May I remind you that, okay, we, we have a, a, an error. Uh, we, sh we can delete this uh, model equal build model. It was a, a test process. Once again, let's run it. Another error, validation steps. Oh, okay, very simple one. Test it again, train it again, basically. Okay, it's running. Okay, so this is the initial values. As for now, the best value is empty since it's the first trial. You can see trial number one. And in each trial, it's going to execute it 12 times. And in each one of the 12 times, it's going to run all the, the epochs. So it's not all the epochs until it uh, stops by an early stopping. But as for now, the number of epochs is uh, two. And it's not really a, a good value, but uh, now it's running for, for a, a simple test just to figure out that everything is uh, okay. So just to, to understand that the process, the process is very important. As you can see, it's now going to run 12 times. You can see epoch number one, epoch number two, epoch number one, epoch number two, 12 times. And this will be only the first trial. And we are going to run it five trials. And in each time, since we chose the random search function, it's going to randomly uh, build or, or produce new values to our filters, our learning rate and our dropout. And of course, for the last uh, dense uh, layer. So let's to do, let's do a fast forward and go to, to the last step. See, this is a trial number two. And now we have a, a best values so far. So you can understand uh, so far for filter layer one, it's 256, layer two, it's 64, layer three, it's 128. So I believe that the process is uh, understood and this is only a prototype so we will uh, go directly to to the end and let's uh, start a, a new fresh process you can see this is the the best parameters in our prototype and you can see that the validation accuracy is uh, zero to 0 0.24 so basically it's uh, uh, not a, a bad no, <laughs> not a good model so let's change our epochs let's change it to 30 maybe higher let's do it 50 since we have an early stopping it's not really important and the max time will be max try will be 5 and 12 and I believe we are ready to run it So this is the process in it's in a in a fast forward and basically took nine hours to do the whole training. And let's jump directly to the end. And so after five trials and twelve execution in each trial, and in each time we ran 50 epochs, let's see the result. see the, the result okay for layer, layer number one it's 96 224 and the layer 3 is 64 and 96 and this is the learning rate and the last dense there it's 448 so this is the best parameters and we can see that we got a very good validation 
Validation uh, accuracy of 0.74, not a wow uh, accuracy, but it's, it's a very good one and, and it's much better from our uh, basic uh, CNN process. Next, let's uh, test our model. Let's use the same, uh, the same Python, F, Python program we wrote uh, in our uh, PAR2 uh, lesson. So we are just uh, changing the name of our model to, to our uh, hyperparam model and let's run it. So basically we will get uh, all the, the, the 30 images of the monkeys and once again you can see the predicted value and the real value. It's a much better model and you can see that in our randomly images 30 of the images, 25 of the images are correct from the 30 random images. Nice. Now let's uh, do some uh, uh, change in our uh, model, in our uh, hyperparam model. There is another uh, good uh, function uh, in the Keras, uh, Keras tuner. And instead of using the random search, we are going to use a different uh, model uh, that create a, a terminant of all the, the training processes. First of all, let's change our uh, name of the saved model so it will not overwrite our previous uh, work. And instead of random search, uh, we are going to use another function. So once again, we are going to define this uh, tuner variable. And instead of random search, we are going to use hyperband. Hyperband, as, as I said, it's like building a terminant of a uh, of a, like, like a sports dominant and going to look for the best model in this process. So this function gets several arguments. The first one is the same, the build model. This is our function. And the second argument is the objective, which is uh, examine the validation accuracy. And we are going to use the default value. One is the max epoch, epochs, let's say, uh, uh, put the 100, this is the, the default uh, value. And the next one is, is a factor inside this uh, epochs. Let's say uh, uh, the def default is free. So you can see how many times we should execute it in, inside uh, each, each loop. And two more arguments, which is the directory of the files and the name of the project and the uh, overwrite true or false for uh, delete or, or maybe resetting these uh, files. I prefer to, to, to change it to true that each time it will uh, begin writing all the files, all the files. Okay, this is the hyperband function. And the rest basically should be the same. Okay, let's run it. Okay, we have a syntax error. I forgot the comma. Once again, very similar, but the process is a little bit different. We have initial values and we have a best values and uh, it's going to run several hours. So once again, let's jump to the end of the training. And let's see the, the results. Okay, so we have a validation accuracy of dot it's 76% and this is the value uh, 96 for the filters of the layer number one and 60, 64 for layer number two and 256 for layer number three 
and another 256 and this is the learning rate and the dropout is 30 percent and for the last tendency it's 576 so if you are going if if we will use these parameters we will get a 76 percentage of validation accuracy once again let's copy the the name of the file and let's run the testing process and let's see the the random images of the of the monkeys the real values and the predicted values okay you can see it's 23 corrected predicted corrected the uh, uh, monkeys out of uh, 30 thank you very much i hope you enjoyed this tutorial this is part three and we will start the part four which is using transfer learning bye bye